This is, this is going to dry and you'll see your finish. It's more of a sheen, of a silky sheen. The more layers of oil applied, the glossier your finish will get. In a, in a uh, pure oil, 24 hour dry time per layer. And when you're done, then you need days of curing before you're going to go on to your next step. So oil, it's always recommended that you apply two to three layers. Uh, most people are choosing oil also, not only for the beauty that it will accentuate the grain, but also it's a much harder finish than wax. So uh, this is a chosen finish for a wooden butcher block, uh, salad bowls. This is food safe and non-toxic. So uh, you can use it on the interior of a salad bowl, on a wooden butcher block, on a countertop. And the more layers you apply, the more water resistant and harder it is. Much harder than water. Yes, you can. And it's kind of recommended because your oil is taking a great deal of your time and effort and energy. And you'll see as we kind of rub it in and rub it down and you have to watch it for bleed back. So your oil finish is time consuming. Um, if you scratch that or dent it, it's a whole other procedure. You, you have to apply more oil. Whereas if you have wax on top of your oil, the wax will take the brunt of the surface damages, will protect your wood and your oil underneath. If you were to put down a hot, a really hot pot or a wet water vase or, you know, something like that. So wax is a recommended finish on literally everything except polyurethane. You can even put a wax over a varnish, um, lacquers. So um, basically, the wax is meant as um, your protecting coat. It's your least expensive finish. It's your quickest applied finish. So if that is the case, you want to use that as your surface coat to protect certainly your shellacs and your oil. In the real world, I would do two to three coats, and really, it's, it's sealed. But you do need to apply oil once a year. So if this were on a nice kitchen uh, wooden uh, uh, chopping block you have in your house, once a year. Um, we have our, uh, uh, do you all know Mario Rodriguez, our woodworking professor? He made a beautiful mahogany workbench in, in uh, I came from FIT, right? Do you all remember that? And um, uh, he put tongue oil as a finish on his workbench, and it, it's beautiful. Um, it needs a little touch-up now, but it's really, it's really nice. So he chose, he chose uh, tongue oil for his uh, workbench. It doesn't have a lot of damage. You reapply your wax once a year. It, if you don't go with wax, uh, definitely your oil once a year. Right. Well, shellac is, is fragile to heat and everything, but oil is actually much more heat oh, and yeah. water oh. resistant. At least wait seven days before applying a wax. Well, well, there's a little water droplet test, and that really that just tells you if you have enough oil. But um, really it has to do with humidity. It has to do with maybe how much oil the wood has absorbed. Uh, you know, some, some woods are going to take a tremendous amount of oil. It depends on how old your wood is. It's, it's dependent on a lot of things, but I would wait at least seven days, 14. The longer you wait, the safer, definitely, the more cure time it has. If you, if you have the time, 14 days is great. A month is, is great if you can. Yeah, we're going to do that today. We're going to make a little, like a little kind of slurry and really work it into your oil, and then we're going to wipe it away and we're going to watch and see every hour or two we may have some bleed back. So it's almost like babysitting wood when you, when you use an oil. You have to watch for bleed back. Because if that dries on your piece and you come back to it the next day, it's really hard to get out of, even with a steel wool. So you really want to watch it and wipe back. Um, and then we're going to cut back with steel wool, and then we would go to the next application. We won't be able to do that today. We'll do up until the final, you know, up until before we can do step two, we'll get, do all of step one. It can be for something that needs to have a harder finish than a wax. So you would choose a piece if it's having, uh, if it's going to be handled a little more. You choose, choose an oil depending on the wood. If it's a very attractive wood, the oil is really going to accentuate that. A, a, where you can do a table in a living room. Um, oils are used often in kitchen areas because it's a non-toxic finish. Um, you know, it, um, if you have any piece made of walnut, a small decorative piece, a piece that's turned or, or a little box or something. Let me just mention, did everyone get tongue oil except Lori? We have also, which you're welcome to try, is a finishing oil. This is 
pure tongue oil also with a resin dryer. So your dry time with this product is four to five hours. So you can choose something like this if you were in a rush, if you had to finish something, if you needed to apply three coats and you had two days, or something like that. So I, I'm going to just use this. That was one coat. That's Van Dyke Crystals. Yeah, but also keep in mind, that's like a really soft grain. So, but it, what happens when we do Van Dyke Crystals is you can mix it absolutely to strength, as, as thick or as thin as you like, for a, as dark a color or as light a color. Warm water. Warm water. It's so beautiful to dissolve. It, it was, it was um, just that piece of wood. It wasn't treated really, wasn't sanded or anything, um, planed. I took a simple lacquer brush, which we're going to do right now, and we're going to put on a generous amount. We're going to work it in with a very fine, this is the finest I have, grit sandpaper, make a little slurry, and then we're going to wipe it away and we're going to start to build the silky coats, feels like. You can stain before you use tongue oil, right? You absolutely can stain, yes. You can stain before you use tongue oil, certainly. Any kind of stain? Um, you have to be conscious of the same product can lift the color. So because this is an oil, an oil-based, it will activate an oil-based stain. So you may want to use an alcohol stain or a water-based stain. Your next step could lift or affect your previous step. So where an, an oil-based stain and an oil will, it will affect. In particular, I'm using the finishing oil. Now, let me just state that because this has one coat on it, I've already done this, but I just want you to see this. Let's say I put this on two days ago. It's totally dry. My 24 hours has gone by. I've wiped away any bleed back in between. Before I apply my second coat, I want to cut back lightly with this very unique Four zero steel wool. This is very fine steel wool. This will not scratch your surface. It's also virtually oil free, which is very important. So uh, always with the grain, very lightly. We're just going to cut back. Um, what could have happened in the 24 hours is little dust will settle and possibly a brush a hair, a brush a hair from the brush a little bubble or something. Uh, it, I had just in travel, I have a little white spot from liming wax on this. So just a, a gentle cutting back. I just want you to see how much is put on. If Can you guys? Um, where, to say we're flooding the surface is a little extreme. You don't, want a, you don't want puddles, but you want to put on a generous amount because the wood will easily absorb whatever it needs. Use a rag to apply. Uh, definitely a rag or a brush. Absolutely. Um, what are you applying? We're applying right now the oil. I'm applying the finishing oil wherever that can is, just because we ran we ran out of the tongue oil. But essentially, this is tongue oil. Think of it as tongue oil. So we're going to let this sit on the surface. Now we're going to take our hold it to whatever's comfortable for your hands. Um, I'm, I already can see what part of the oil is, a, is being absorbed around the edges, is already naturally being absorbed. And we're going to just gently, um, I have to work on that surface, but we're just going to gently, yes, because what we're doing is we're working it into the grain. We're kind of aiding in, in the absorption process. Oh yeah, you want to really work it in. What I'm using here, it, it's um, it just says double zero. It didn't have a a number, but it's as fine as I had this morning. So you want to do like at like 400, 600. So, you know, it's I would do a little finer than this, 220. Sandpaper is a little better to use than steel wool. Working it in, and I can already see what has been absorbed here. When you feel that you've covered your piece enough, you're going to just kind of observe and then we're going to wipe away. Because you're making a, like a slurry, as soon as you apply it, you're, you're working with, with it on the surface, you're working it in until the 24 hour dry time is up. It can come back out of your surface at any time in that dry time. Oh, so that's good. So that means if I tell my wife I can't go out and do anything. Exactly. You have to babysit this. Yeah. This isn't shiny. 
Hmm? How come it's not saying? Because I've not been putting Well, you know, your first coat is going to be a little more matte. As okay. you build, it gets more glossy. Okay. Right. Your second coat is like silky, and your third okay. coat is glossy. Okay. Yeah? But this is my first coat. Okay, with the, yeah, you're going, just not in a circle, with the grain. Oh, with the grain? With the grain, okay. yeah. And, and I did it with this, and um, it didn't, didn't seem to do much for the chair. Yeah, because it, it look how much it absorbed. Did you put a, enough on? I you, on did you really coats. need it to flood at yeah. once, a thick coat, to flood the surface? Uh, yeah. You did. Okay, so that's how dry that is. That absolutely absorbed that very quickly. And, well, and also your first coat, oil needs about three coats before it builds. So oh, you're just okay. starting. So okay. you're not going to see, you're not going to see much. But that's probably good. Let that sit. Yeah, that's that's what pretty feel, nice. What I feel now. Yeah. Exactly, and you're really, you're, the sandpaper is agitating the grain right. and allowing the oil to penetrate a little more. Okay. Uh, you're just aiding the penetration process. This, this is a, a, just a nice step. It's not necessary. A lot of people would just flood this on and leave it. You right. can do that too. This is just a little, a nice little aid. Now, you're going to wipe that bag. Let that rest for like a minute and wipe away. I love oil on walnut. That's my favorite. Um, now, did you you what? Okay, so I see you've already got a little bleed back here already, or just parts that weren't absorbed. You see that? So you're gonna have excess on their surface. It may not come. Do you see that on the tips? Okay. It may not. It will come out within hours. It, it may not come out immediately. But uh, it will come back out. The, the grain will just kind of um, squeeze out what it doesn't want. Uh, so we're going to watch for that. After lunch, we're probably all going to need to, we'll notice on our pieces what's coming back out. Shellac, then varnish, then lacquer, then polyurethane. It, it can be, um, it, it, they're both, they have different properties, whereas um, um, the shellac, the oil is going to be a little more uh, maybe water resistant. The shellac can easily make, a, you can make a watermark on shellac in 15 minutes. Depends on how the, if the shellac, uh, how maybe it was applied or how it's finished. Shellac is very fragile. Uh, so oil, shellac and oil have different properties of, of hardness. Um, but they're both, I would say, you know, oil is considered hard and durable as is shellac, yet it's easy to scratch an oil finish. It's easy to mark a shellac finish. Different, different damages happen. Have that cure time finished with a wax or something because um, you are going to have, it can easily smell in an enclosed area. Uh, the, you know, it's just as after you close the door, you know, it'll just, the vapors will stay there. Um, shellac would be better. I would think shellac would be better. Yeah, as long as you have proper dry times with that also. Yeah, definitely on a salad bowl. Absolutely. The interior of a salad bowl is very nice. You, you, you wouldn't want to use a wax on the interior of a salad bowl because of the solvent, but... Uh, the oils are fine for that. That's what's recommended. Salad bowl, any wooden, you know, countertop, anything where there's going to be food, the tongue oil is, is food safe. So we are going to move on to staining. Uh, everything's marked, and you, after you choose your color, you're just going to shake it well. And then I also have uh, these cans, which we can pour as much as you want. Uh, I have a, a poppy red, sky blue, and lemon yellow. So welcome to come up and choose a color if anyone wants the brights here's the wood yeah the wood tones are both the same yeah please do these are the bright colors choose uh, whichever you like uh, or we can do a little bit of red or if we have a little cup to pour these in these are transparent water-based stains these in particular have a grain raising inhibitor but not all stains do so Go ahead and stain a piece, and we're going to be able to feel it. You can feel it right away, but in an hour, a half hour, I'd like you to observe how much the grain is raised. You can determine if that's acceptable, depending on how you're going to finish it. If you're going to go on to some hard finishes, it may not be necessary. If you're going to just apply a wax on top of it, you may want to raise your grain first, which is very simply, you get your grain wet with water, a little cloth with water, make sure the surface is fully saturated. Um, let that dry, 
uh, naturally or if you had a hair dryer to speed up the process. And then you're going to cut back with sandpaper. And then you've pre-raised the grain and now you can go ahead with water-based products. But a nice way to test this is to do one piece where we've raised the grain and one piece where we haven't. And you compare, feel the difference. So does anyone have a little bit of their wood they would like to do that on?